My name is Tito and welcome to this special Halloween episode of Retro Renew. This is part two of this mini-series where we try to get into the Halloween spirit. If you haven't already, check out part one where I go over my favorite spooky video game titles. You can check it out by clicking on the card at the top of your screen or in the link in the description below. So today in part two, I'm going to attempt to bring this Game Gear back from the dead. Now, this Game Gear was sent to the channel by Matthew Macheski from New York, so I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to him for sending it in. As you can see, he also sent in the TV tuner add-on, but we'll save that for another video. Now, as you can see, the unit won't power on with batteries, and when plugged into the wall, it quickly powers on and then shuts off immediately. This Game Gear has certainly seen some better days. Now, these issues are telltale signs of bad capacitors, which is very common on Game Gear consoles. This is especially true with the caps on the power board, since it seems we cannot get it to power on. It is my hope that if we replace all the capacitors, we can give this Game Gear a new lease on life. Now, I'm actually really excited about this particular capacitor kit that I bought from Retro 6. What this kit does is it replaces almost all of the electrolytic capacitors with ceramic ones. This kit comes in clearly labeled baggies, as well as with a set of simple instructions. So you may be asking yourself, what are the benefits of ceramic capacitors? Well, first, they will never leak. Ceramic capacitors, unlike their electrolytic counterparts, have a much longer lifespan. And because they don't leak any electrolytic fluid, you don't have to worry about them causing any damage to the solder pads or the traces. Second, you don't need to worry about the polarity when installing them. They can be installed in either direction. And lastly, I think they will overall be easier to install. Because they have a much smaller footprint than an electrolytic capacitor, you don't need to worry as much about their placement or the capacitors getting in the way when you're putting the console back together. All in all, I think this will be an awesome upgrade to the console, and I really hope this solves the problem. Fingers crossed. And so, without any further ado, let's get right into it. To start, I removed the old lanyard from the bottom of the game gear. Then the two battery covers. Next unfasten the 4.5mm game bit as well as the six Phillips screws. Unfortunately, this console was missing four of the Phillips screws. You can now split open the console. Remove the three cables attached to the power and sound daughter boards. Now we're going to remove the motherboard by unfastening the six Phillips screws around the perimeter and the two larger screws on either side of the cartridge slot. And here is the motherboard. Moving our attention to the rear shell, unfasten the four screws securing the RF shield. Next, unfasten the two screws, securing the sound PCB to the rear shell. Here you can see what the soundboard looks like. Now remove the two Phillips screws, securing the power board to the rear shell. And then peel off this plastic cover. You can now remove the power board. 
Great, now let's start recapping the console, starting with the motherboard. Typically, the aluminum cans of these capacitors are housed in these cube-shaped plastic enclosures and then glued to the PCB. It appears, however, that over time these plastic enclosures became brittle and are crumbling. These usually lift right off the PCB fairly easily. Reflow the solder on each leg, then heat the pad while lifting the capacitor in order to remove the leg. Do this for each leg until the capacitor is removed. Here I'm attempting to remove the remnants of the plastic enclosure. However, it appears to be partially fused to the PCB. This is a bigger issue on the soundboard as we'll see in a moment. Here I'm adding flux to further clean the solder pads. Then giving the area a thorough cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. Now to install the ceramic capacitor, pre-tin just one of the pads. Position the capacitor appropriately, taking note that the polarity does not matter, so you can install it in either direction. Then tack it in place with your soldering iron. Here's a better angle. Again, pre-tin one solder pad. Then position the capacitor, tack it in place while holding its position, and then solder the other side. Fantastic! Now just repeat this process with the remaining capacitors on the motherboard and it should look a little something like this. Great! With the motherboard fully recapped, let's give the LCD a thorough cleaning. As well as all the button contacts. Now let's move our attention to the soundboard. I like to use flush cutters to help remove the surface mounted capacitors, but you may prefer a different method. And here's the issue I was alluding to previously. The plastic base on these capacitors have become fused to the PCB. I spent about 30 minutes trying to remove them with IPA to no avail. I eventually decided to melt the plastic off using my soldering iron, which seemed to work pretty well. After a quick clean, here are the results. I think it came out pretty good. And last but not least is the power board. There are just three through-hole electrolytic capacitors that we need to replace. I'll be using my trusty Heiko desoldering gun to make quick work of these. Then solder in the new ones. And here's the final result. Let's give it a quick test before we put it all back together. Alright, it works. Unfortunately, we have some black bars though. Oh well, that's okay, we're going to go ahead and button it up anyway. I went ahead and gave the shells, buttons, and membranes a deep clean off camera. It needed quite a bit of work. There's only one thing left to do, and that's to wipe it down with some Aerospace 303 to condition the plastic and give it a nice luster. And of course, one final test. Fantastic. And there you have it. We were able to bring this Game Gear back from the dead, and I couldn't be more excited. It wasn't without its hiccups, however. This revival proved to be a little tougher than I had anticipated. 
Something that I really haven't seen before is the plastic components on some of these capacitors, namely the surface mounted ones on the soundboard, seem to have become fused to the PCB. It was extremely difficult to remove these plastic pieces, and I just ended up melting them off with my soldering iron. Have any of you seen this before? Let me know in the comments below and if you were able to remove it without using your soldering iron. I tried soaking it in IPA also, and that really didn't seem to work. Anyway, another issue is that the LCD is damaged, showing black horizontal lines across the screen. On the bright side, it makes this unit a perfect candidate for an LCD upgrade later on, so stay tuned for that. And lastly, for the sake of time, I wasn't able to fully clean the PCB as thoroughly as I would have liked to. When I attempt an LCD mod on this Game Gear in the future, I will certainly give the motherboard a deeper clean and try to remove the residual plastic material left behind by the old capacitors. Well, besides those minor issues, I'm glad to say that this capacitor kit works, and it works well. It's really quite amazing. There are no electrolytic capacitors on the motherboard now, which essentially means that we'll never have to worry about leaky capacitors ever again. Only the power board on the Game Gear has electrolytic capacitors, but thankfully they are through hole and are quite easy to replace. All in all, I'm relieved that we were able to give this Game Gear a new lease on life. We were able to fully restore it from how it was before to the way it is now, and it is currently ready for future mods. It's always scary not knowing what is wrong with these units, but replacing the capacitors is always a good bet. I would love it if they would release these type of ceramic capacitor kits for other consoles as well that tend to suffer from leaky electrolytic capacitors. So that about does it for part 2 of this Halloween special of Retro Renew. What did you guys think of this Game Gear revival? How do you like these holiday themed episodes? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as we get closer to October 31st, I want to wish you all a happy, safe, and spooktacular Halloween. Again, big thank you to Matthew for sending this Game Gear to the channel. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, we'll see you next time.